He's mindful of me tonight. Amen. He's mindful of me, and he knows, amen, my heart, amen, and he knows that which I need. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we've been thinking about this service tonight, amen, praying the Lord would help us, amen, with just a few minutes of time, amen, if you will, amen, I want you to turn to Genesis with me tonight, amen, and we're going to go, amen, to the story, amen, of Abraham, and I told you tonight we may, amen, at some time hit that that part, amen, uh, about Abraham, amen, hallelujah, and thinking about, amen, how good it is to serve him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I got to go back and find it again. I thought I had it marked. 22nd one. That's what I thought. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did you enjoy the singing tonight? Amen. Appreciate that tonight. Amen. We got to work on our sister to make sure she can hear better. Amen. Sometimes them things don't want to do like they ought to. Amen. But we appreciate everybody that has a part. Amen. The Lord takes note, amen, whenever we're obedient. And he takes note, amen, whenever we try, amen, to do that which he'd have us to do. And I'm just, I'm amazed tonight that God's people, amen, can do mighty things, amen, when we let God work. Amen. It's amazing to me how God can take something, amen, that may not seem like much in the scope of this world. But God can take a child, or he can take a young lady, or he can take a young man, or he can take a one past maybe his or her prime, amen, and use them mightily for the kingdom of God. And many mighty strongholds can be torn down, amen, because of an obedient person, amen, that wants to please God, amen. We read somewhat this morning and talked about, amen, Abraham. And I wanted to just take the time tonight, if you will, amen, let's read through this account of history. Amen, that which Abraham did, and we want to talk, amen, for a few minutes of time, amen, about the ram, amen, in the bush, amen. I want to tell you something tonight, God will provide, amen. You can count on God, amen. You, you don't count on me, don't count on this church, but count on God, amen. We're a part of the family of God, and our best heart, amen, is to please God with our life, but amen, man will fail, amen. Women will fail, amen. Situations will come up, amen. Religions will fail and denominations will let you down, amen. But the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, that which he did for us will never fail, amen. And God the Father in heaven looking down on us tonight, amen. His perfect will is that we'd all come to the knowledge of his son Jesus Christ. But we understand tonight in the, the push that we're in and the press that we're in, amen, many are turning away, amen, from the good doctrine or the sound doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. But in this 22nd chapter, you don't have to stand tonight because we're going to read through it. And I know some of you have a hard time standing that long. So if you will, just listen. Page 22, or uh, chapter 22 of Genesis Gospel. If you're there, say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Now we know this word tempt. Well, just let me go on. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. I won't never get to preach it if I stop right there. Amen. <clears throat> he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Now let this sink into you tonight, church. God has called Abraham to take his only son, Isaac. Now, we know Abraham had another son named Ishmael. Amen. Did he not? Somebody say amen. Amen. And Ishmael was born of Abraham's loin. He was Abraham's son, but he was not the son of the promise. He was not the son, amen, that God said, I will bless thee and make of thee many nations. Amen. He was not from, uh, uh, from that uh, union, amen, between Abraham and Hagar was the blessing of God going to come amen, into this world, it was going to come through Isaac. And so God here is, is specifically speaking about the promise. Amen, I want you to take your only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. In other words, Abraham don't know, amen, which one it's going to be. In other words, he can't see, amen, which mountain it's going to be. He's going to have this, 
this angst in his heart the whole time. Amen. This is something I've got to do. And he don't know which one or what time or how it's going to happen. Amen. He just simply knows he's got to go. Amen. And take this young son and go before the Lord with him. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Amen. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. Amen. Get this picture with me. Abraham rose up early in the morning. He saddled his ass and he took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. He's got the wood. He claved the wood for the burnt offering, rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Amen. Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here. With the ass and I and the young lad or I and the lad will go yonder and worship and we will come again unto you. Amen. Did Abraham think at this moment that he was going to be coming back with Isaac? That's a declaration of faith, amen. Knowing that God told him to take Isaac, amen, and get to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering. But yet he tells these men, you stay here with the donkey, me and the lads going up yonder to worship. And we will come back unto you. Amen. I believe God had already talked to him. Amen. I believe God had already, amen, give him a, a, an insight, amen, that God was going to work. And I want to stop right here for just a minute and I want to say this. How many of you God has given a promise to? Amen. God has promised you something, but you don't know how it's going to come about. Amen. And it's in the midst of waiting for that promise to come to fruition Amen, that we can lose our faith or we can be, amen, in the hard way. We can be in the valley. We can be underneath somewhat the pressure, amen. Uh, the enemy uses that time, amen, to buffet us and to come against us. But we still know in the back of our mind and the bottom of our heart that my God, amen, gave me a promise, amen. Uh, and I have to, uh, amen, uh, I have to remember that constantly, daily, amen. I must, amen, look to him, amen, and remind myself daily, amen that he has not forgot about me but he is very much amen uh, going to bless me it's just not my time yet Abraham knew that he and the lad was going to go yonder God said go offering and I believe that he's making a declaration of faith here I believe he is saying Lord I know you have told me to go offer my only son that which I love more than anything else but I know that you are a God that provides I know that you are a God that makes a way. I have served you from the moment that you called me. The first time I heard your voice, I got up out of the land of my fathers and I made my way to the land which you told me to trod on. And I have taken every day, every step, amen, according to thine direction. Uh, and I'm going to get up and me and the lads going uh, and I'm going to do this what you'd had me to do. But I'm expecting, God, for you to make a way. I believe that was how he was looking at this situation. How else can you look at this situation? How else can you face, take your son and take him to the mountain, which I'll tell you. And there I want you to offer him to me for a burnt offering. How else can a man get up that which is necessary and take off if he don't know that he knows that he knows? Oh, come on, church. Amen. We, we, we passed bubble gum and popcorn now. We, we down in the meat of it. Let's get down there where it's good. Amen. Let's get down there where we can grow. Amen. You've sucked on the milk enough. Amen. Come on. Amen. We're talking about knowing that we know that we know. Hey, I'm in a bad situation. Hey, I'm in the bottom of this thing. Hey, it feels like the muck and the mire. It feels like the mud's up to my knee. I can't run. I can't jump. I can't feel, amen, any good thing, amen. It seems like darkness is all around me. It seems like, amen, I'm, a, I'm the bug and not the windshield, amen. It seems like I'm underneath the pressure and the weight of the world, amen. But yet something inside of me, amen, amen, refuses to give up, amen, of the promise that he gave me, amen, that I shall not leave thee nor forsake thee, amen. But yet I'm underneath it but I'm going to look up amen and I'm going to cry out to him anyway 
Amen. Yes, it feels like I have the weight of the world. The foot of the enemy is on my neck and he's oppressing, amen. And yes, it feels like I'm going under, amen. I didn't give him this authority. I didn't want this, amen. But this is where I am, amen. And I'm not going to give any itch to the enemy, amen. But I'm going to declare in the name of Jesus, amen. I'm coming up out of here, amen. When God says come, I'm coming. Amen. How many of you ready tonight? Amen. It's time to make a move. It's time, amen, to make a move. Against the enemy which has come against you. Amen. Abraham took the wood. Amen of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. I want you to get this picture. We're talking about God will provide. Get this picture. Abraham and Isaac going up the mountain. He's told the men to stay back. This is something that me and the lads got to do. In other words, the crowd can't come with you. Amen. You can't have your support team. Amen. You can't have everybody. Amen. In other words, there's some things, amen, you're just going to have to go through. There's some things that's going to be between you and God. Amen. You can call the pastor. You can call the deacon. Amen. You can call the city council. You can call the president. Amen. But there's some things you're going to have to go through on your own. Amen. There's a darkness. Amen. There's a nighttime. Amen. A season. Amen. To endure. Amen. That I can't help you in. Amen. I can encourage you from the place I am. Uh, I'm where the men are. I'm standing here looking up, seeing you go. And I'm saying, go bless it in the name of the Lord. Amen. Do what God would have you to do. But that's as far as the pastor can go. That's as far as the deacon can go. That's as far as the church can go. But you're going to have to continue. Amen. You're going to have to have something inside of it that says, Hey, amen, my God's going to provide. I, I don't see how yet. And I know what I'm giving is the, uh, it's the closest thing to my, this is the thing that has been between me and God. Not that it meant to be, not that I wanted it to be, but I love him so much, amen. But yet, how much do you love God? Amen. God's calling him to a place here where it's just going to be between him and the Lord. And he's going to say, on this mountain, here at this altar, amen, you're going to make a decision if you're going to put anything else before me. Abraham, Isaac, going up the mountain. Amen. He lays the wood on the back of young Isaac. I remember some thousand years later, there would be a young man that would walk through the streets of Jerusalem and the Bible says that they would take, amen, two pieces of wood and they would fashion a cross out of it and they would lay it on his back. Amen. The father looking on as the son totes the wood. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something tonight, church. Uh, we see a picture, amen, of Isaac following the father, amen, going up to that place, amen, where he's going to lay down. He don't understand it. Uh, he's a young boy. Uh, he don't know the depth, the height, the length, and the breadth thereof. Uh, but his father, amen, very much knows, amen, that which he must do. Uh, and we see the picture of Christ, amen, saying, not my will, but thy will be done, Father. I'll go and I'll do that which you'd have me to do. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. It can break out tonight if you want it to. You're going to have to take the top off and let him have his way. Amen. I can only take it so far. Amen. You're going to have to want it for yourself tonight. Isaac spake. Hey, let's look at this. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and he laid it upon Isaac, his son. Amen. Here they are going up the mountain. Amen. Isaac's got the wood on his back. Amen. That which will carry the fire. Amen. That which will burn. Amen. Uh, as he lays there. Amen. And his father. Amen. Does the necessary work to offer him before God. I know it may uh, put a, a gruesome thought in the mind. It may look. Amen. A bad place. Uh, amen. But you got to understand. Amen. The sacrifice was a bloody mess. Uh, amen. There was blood that was spilled. Amen. Uh, an innocent victim lay upon the altar. Amen. Uh, it took that which had no sin. Amen. Uh, in order to stand in the gap for that which was full of sin. Uh, and Jesus said I have come into the world. Amen. He which knew no sin, but yet he was made. Amen. Sin. He took it. Amen. Washed it in his blood. Amen. And captivated it and caused us. Amen. To be able to come spotless before the Lord. Those that have been washed in the blood. We see this picture. Amen. Of Isaac going up. Amen. And the Bible says. Amen. That he, that he took. Amen. The fire in his hand. Amen. And a knife. And they went both of them together. 
Oh, church, get the picture here. Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and he said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood. In other words, he said, Father, I have seen the sacrifice before. He said, I have been with you a many a time when we've gone before the God of heaven and we brought, amen, the things necessary, amen, to carry out the sacrifice. And he said, I see here the wood, amen. And he said, I see, amen, the fire, amen. He says, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Amen, the young son looking at his father. Amen. Being a part of this many times. Uh, he said, Father, I have seen it. Amen. Uh, this is not the first time. This is my words, but bear with me. Uh, he's been with him many a time. Uh, amen. He saw, amen, the sacrifice. Uh, he's watched him build the altar. Amen. Uh, he's seen him gather the wood. Uh, he's called him, amen, strike the ark. Amen. Uh, that caused the fire. Uh, he saw and watched him. Amen. Uh, baby that fire until it comes. Uh, amen. A roaring flame. Uh, and they, amen, take the sacrifice. Uh, amen and they lay it upon the altar and they dissect it. Uh, amen. And there's a certain way uh, that they have to make the offering. Uh, part of it goes before God. Uh, part of it is taken out of the camp. Uh, amen. And part of it is scaled to the refuse gate. Uh, but here in the early part of the sacrifice, uh, amen, he's going to offer, amen, the offering uh, before God. And Isaac says, where is the offering, Father? Something's missing here, the young man says. I wonder tonight, can our children, hey amen, can they, have they seen enough out of mom and dad, amen, that they can tell when something ain't right? Can they tell when something's missing? Hey amen, has mom and dad, amen, been a light and been an example? Hey amen, have we held up the bloodstained banner? Hey amen, have we done that which is necessary that those that come behind me, hey amen, can see, amen, uh, that God's a working. Uh, can they see, can my children see, uh, can my grandchildren see something in me? Uh, Brother Chris, I have a life lived. Uh, I've not done what God wanted me to do, uh, but from this night forward, uh, you can set it in your hearts, uh, hey amen, to live a life uh, where those that come behind you can see. Hey amen, a difference. Hey amen. They know when mama prays. They know when daddy prays. They know, amen, when things are right. Amen, God, the peace of the Lord is in the house. Amen, and God's a moving, God's a working. Amen, our children can see this. Amen, I'm wondering tonight. Amen, Isaac saw something that wasn't right. Father, where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God, can we trust you tonight that there's nothing else that was said that we need to know that happened on this conversation going up the mountain. I believe, though, saith the Lord, the Holy Ghost knows what we needed to know. Amen. Was there anything else that was said that we needed? If there was, it wasn't necessary to be put in the book. Amen. We must be careful when we interject what we think should happen or when we interject what we think is going to happen. Amen. And not stay with what did happen. Amen. This would be a good place, amen, for a silver-tongued devil, amen, to step in, amen, and to do a lot of harm and damage, amen, to the believer. But what I want you to understand is this. Abraham said God will provide himself a lamb. Amen. Did this mean that Abraham, amen, knew God had a ram coming up the other side the same time? No. But what it is is a statement of faith. That even when you and I don't know how God's going to do what God said he was going to do, we have to, amen, toe the line, amen. We have to remain steadfast. We have to remain faithful, amen. There has to be that relationship, amen, with him uh, that causes us, amen, uh, to be able, amen, to stay, amen, under subjection to him uh, and bend ourselves, amen, to the perfect will of God and to continue to tread that, amen, which is not easy. Amen. What I'm saying here is this. Amen. It's not that when we come to God that everything clears out of the way and it's a hap, skip, and a jump to make it to heaven. 
The contrary is the truth. When we come to Christ, uh, we enter into a fight that we never could comprehend before. In other words, there's going to be an opposition uh, all the way to the gate, amen. Uh, and anybody, anything that says otherwise uh, did not come, amen, from the Bible. Because when we look and study the men and women of God, uh, we find not a single one of them uh, made it to heaven, amen. Uh, in my heart, I don't believe one of them makes it without going through trouble. Amen. Trouble. What does that mean? That means I, amen, am going to face things. If I'm going to lift his name up, I'm going to have to understand this. We preach this all the time. It never changes. Why? Because we have to be reminded on a constant basis. The one thing that nobody in here likes is trouble. Somebody in here likes apple pie. Somebody in here don't like apple pie. Somebody in here likes fried chicken. They probably one that don't like fried chicken. But I guarantee you every one of us hates trouble. Now, some of us is more conducive to trouble than others. Some of us is like a lightning rod for trouble. I mean, when, when trouble starts to rise, we're the first one to find that trouble signal so I can get it started. I don't like it, but I want to own. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm not looking for that. When trouble comes, I have to deal with it. But I certainly don't want to instigate it. I certainly don't want to be a part of it. So we see this Abraham here. When he tells the young lad, God will provide himself a lamb. He's still understanding that this is the lamb. He can't tell him he's the lamb. This young man ain't where father is yet. This young man's tender. This young man is not where the father is. The father can't tell him, son, it's you. We're going up there and I'm on. God wants you. I don't believe, you know, he could tell him at this time. He simply tells him, God will provide himself a lamb at the right time. So they both went together and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built there an altar and he laid the wood in order. Somebody say he laid the wood in order. Mm. We're serving God. Oh, we're doing that which God would have us to do. There's a work that must be done. There's a way to come before God. How many of you know you can't be living in sin? Get a guilty conscience and go and stand before God and say, I didn't mean to do what I did. Please forgive me. Number one, he or she's coming in the wrong way. A guilty conscience does not equal conviction. There's a lot of people coming in out of the house of God with a guilty conscience. They're ashamed of the things they've done, but they're not sorry for them. See, whenever I was guilty and ashamed of the things I'd done, it meant I didn't want nobody to find out about it. But it didn't mean I didn't want to do it again if I got the opportunity. Big difference. See, whenever God began to deal with my heart about what was wrong in my life, when true conviction came to my heart, amen, not only was I ashamed of what I did, not only did I not know, want nobody to know what I did, but I didn't want to do it anymore. And when I would find myself doing those things which I would not, I would cry out like Paul. I'd say, oh, wretched man I am, who shall save me from this body of death? Who can help me? God, can you help me? And it was in this seeking Amen. That which I needed, it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen the first time I felt the conviction power of God. I didn't just immediately melt before Him and give Him everything and come up and I've been in victory ever since. That ain't... Oh, wouldn't that be awesome if that's the way it was? But it was, amen, a dealing with my heart. In other words, amen, the wood had to be laid in order. 
all right, there's some things that's going to have to happen in my heart. Amen. Abraham's going to make the sacrifice. The sacrifice is about, amen, an atonement. Amen. We understand what the sacrifice meant. Amen. The giving of a sacrifice, amen, was an atonement. It was, amen, a, uh, a, a relationship, a work done between you and God where you put faith, amen, in that which you were doing and that which you were doing was where God wanted it and it pleased God and because, amen, God was pleased with the work you did, amen, God washed away, forgot about the sin. It was never, I shouldn't use that word washed. It was never washed away, but it was cast away from his remembrance. In other words, he didn't remember it. Amen. It was an atonement. Blood was shed. Now we see here, he said he lays the wood in order. He builds the altar. I mean, we could go through this line by line, precept by precept, and, and it may be something beautiful that we need to do. Amen. The first step was, amen, to be obedient. Amen. The next step, amen, was to go. Amen. The next step, amen, was to build the place, amen, where he could meet with God. Amen. That may be at your house. That may be at your workplace. Wherever it is, amen, God says do, amen. You hear the words, you go, amen, and you kneel before him. Then you got to put it in order. He puts the wood in order. In other words, before the sacrifice can be accepted. Amen. It's not just enough. And, and this is where we get tripped up a lot of times. Amen. When we come to church, amen, we hear something from God and we follow a preacher in a prayer. Amen. In other words, first off, amen, true conviction is very seldom it's blessed or done anything in that heart. Amen. Amen. In other words, true conviction is a person being under conviction. Amen. This person, amen. Uh, uh, now, you can hear the gospel one time and, and, and believe and be saved. I'm not going to say you can't. But whenever we don't do that which God requires, and yet we believe somebody that's a man or a woman over what God's word teaches, that's when we fall into trouble. So we know here, amen, that Abraham is doing that which God is pleased with in order to accept that which he gives to God. This whole time, you have to understand, he's struggling with giving him, but he's doing everything that God says do. In other words, I'm telling you, whatever you're going through, you do, amen, what God says do. Amen, don't deviate. Amen, don't hold back. Amen, but do what God says. God, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to follow your word. And I'm going to do what you say do. He lays the wood in order. And that speaks, amen, of the, uh, of the work that's being done that God requires to accept the sacrifice. Amen. If the wood's not in order, it's not necessarily how he laid the wood, but it's in the fact, amen, that he's doing it in the right order. Is that going right over? Going right over? In other words, we can't come and do it like we want to do it. It ain't up to Dr. So-and-so if I get saved or not. I don't care how long the church has been there. I don't care how many people's names is on the roll. Amen. I don't care how much offering they give. If they ain't do it the right way, ain't none of them saved. Ain't none of them going to heaven. Amen. They're believing a lie. You say, well, that's awfully judgmental of you to say I didn't say it the word of God said it there's a way to get saved if the spirit does not draw them if the spirit does not draw them, somebody please amen get behind me and help me if the spirit doesn't draw them I didn't say they wasn't saved. The Word says they wasn't saved. I'm just saying what the Word said. The Word says no man can come to the Father except he come through me. But we have a generation being raised up that believes, amen, things that the Word of God does not teach. Come be a part. Do this, do that. First thing first, you better repent. And be born again. God will take care of the rest of it. The wood's got to be laid in order. God's not going to accept 
the prayer. Oh, you can say at that altar and cry your eyes out. I've seen them do it. I've seen hundreds of teenagers go up there at the altar. One goes and then 75 come and gather around her. And they all got boo-hooed and they all teared up. And boy, every one of them, every one of them's crying and carrying on. Go out there in the parking lot and every one of them's cussing and carrying on, acting the fool, doing things that, I'm going to tell you something. You can put faith in that if you want to. And you can believe your youngin did this or your granddaughter or your nephew or your uncle or whatever. But if the fruit ain't there, you better keep your child before God and keep praying. God, you continue to deal with my child. You continue to deal with my grand young. And God, don't let them believe a lie. But God, you stay on them. Mama's going to keep praying. Daddy's going to keep praying. Grandma's going to keep praying. I want to see, amen, the beneficial. I want to see, amen, the efficacious work. I want to see the atonement work done in that life. That goes for all of us. Amen. A lot of people claiming a lot of things. But the wood was never laid right. Mm, we done got off on something. Amen. Mm. They laid the wood in order. And he bound Isaac on the altar. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar. Adam or Abraham stretched forth his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. Do you see the picture? Abraham stretched forth his hand and he took the knife. With the instrument of death in his hand, I believe he held it before God and said, I know God you're going to provide. But God, this is the last moment. And God, if you're going to provide, I need an answer. Let's wrap this up. God spoke to him sometime before. Abraham, I need you to take Isaac. And I need you to bring him before me. And I need you to offer him as a sacrifice. On the mountain that I'm going to tell you. How many days has passed by between this has happened, we don't know. But what we do know is this, is as they're going, this is in Abraham's mind. As they're moving forward, how far was it from the place they started to the mountain? I'm not sure. Was it a day's journey? Was it a mile? Was it 10 miles? They could see it, but how many of you know you can see a mountain a long way off? They're riding. The whole time he's thinking, I know, God, you've given me this promise. I know, God, you're going to provide. I don't know how, but I'm going to trust you. And what I'm saying is, is in the time it takes to hear the word giving to me until he holds the knife in his hand over the top of him, how many times had Abraham said, God, would you please provide? God, would you please make a way? How many mamas, how many of you cried? God, please don't let my baby die lost. God, please don't let my husband die lost. God, please save my mama, save my daddy. Hey, God, get a hold of him. God's given you a promise. He's going to do something in your life. Amen. He's going to do something in your family. Amen. And you're holding on to it. Amen. And in the time you heard the word. Amen. Until the time it comes. Amen. That seems there's going to be time no more. Many things has happened. In that time frame to cause you. To cry out to God. Oh you've seen them struggle. You've seen them suffer. You've seen them hurt. You've seen them go through things. And you said God if they would just turn. If they would just hear, thus saith the Lord. If they would just believe in their heart. If they would turn their hearts to you, God. You could save them out of their misery. You could restore them, amen. You could redeem them. You could buy them back off the auction block. God, you could make something out of them. If they would just listen. But we can't make them. But you've got to believe. Amen. Like Abraham believed. 
the whole way going with that boy. My God's going to provide. Amen. Amen. God's going to make a way. We come to the close. Abraham's got his hand stretched forth in verse 10. Amen. And he took the knife to slay his son. That must hit home with you. That must resonate in your heart. He's got the knife and he's fixing to take the very promise God gave him. And he's fixing to shed the innocent blood. Oh, I've struggled with this my whole time. I've tried to live right for God. I've struggled with this very verse, amen. How could this happen, amen? How could we get to the place, God, where this is what's necessary in order for us to prove we love you? Oh, I've struggled with that. God, do I really have to do this in order to please you? God, is this what it's going to take? Is there anything else I can do? Is there anything else that I could do? Listen to what I say. I'm the father. I love my children. God himself was a father. And he said, I love my son. But there was no way for you to have life and have it more abundantly except I give my son. So he says, I've not asked anything of you that I haven't done myself. The Bible declares the fact that it was so horrible. Amen. When the sin began to be laid upon him on the cross that God turned, amen, his head and couldn't look. That's love. It's real. Amen. God loved his son. Amen. Every bit as much. Amen. We get caught up in all the theology. Amen. Of this, that, and the other. One, two, three, seventeen, whatever. Amen. We get caught up in all these doctrinal statements. Amen. But what we have to understand is, is that God so loved the world. Amen. That he gave his son. Amen. Just as we think about Abraham. Amen. Taking Isaac up the mountain. Laying the promise on there. This is my child. Amen. But in order to please God. Amen. I must go through with this. So we come to a place where we have to grow. I said something this morning that I didn't hit on as hard as I should have, or maybe it was for tonight. The closer we get to God, the more light there is to see what God is going to do. You can't tell what God's going to do when you're living too far from Him. And the things that God requires, it's hard to carry out because you just can't see what God wants you to do. Oh, God, that's too hard. Oh, God, I can't do that. But as we draw closer to him and the situation is illuminated, the light is on, the thing is magnified, amen, it's drawn closer to it. Now we can see, oh, this is how God's going to use me. Oh, yes, my faith, my strength, amen, is in thee, O oh Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can step out in faith, amen. I can believe God for the miracle, amen. I can believe God for the greater, amen. There is something, amen, better than what I have, amen. But I've got to believe that he's able to make a way. Mm, how many of you believe that tonight? Amen. When you face that which you don't understand. Amen. It's bigger than I am. This, this concept or this, this thinking, amen, of taking, amen, my child. That the God that I serve that can do anything that he would want her. God, is that what it's going to require? Oh, I wrestle with that. Do you? I hope you think about this this week. But the place that we get to whenever we draw closer to God is we begin to understand something. See, it's not Isaac that God wants. Amen. That's why the song is so beautiful. Amen. And when we get to the place when we get past, amen, oh, I could never do that. 
Oh, I couldn't do that. I can't understand why a loving God would want something like that. When we get past the flesh of it, amen, when we get past, amen, the, uh, the here and the now and the natural, amen, and we step, amen, into the supernatural, uh, we step, amen, into the place where God wants us to be, amen, where he said, amen, I can do all things, amen, if you will trust in me, uh, if you will let me show you uh, what I would have for you to have, uh, you will understand it's not him I want, but it's you. But in order for me to have you, he says, I'm going to need you to give up what you're holding on to. And when you're ready to give that up to have me, Satan can't stop you. The government of this world can't stop you. You want to be on fire for God? You lay it all at his feet. Amen. And you say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. God, where's my next journey? Where's my next battle? God, show me that mountain. Amen. What is it you'd have me to do here? Amen. And we begin to take off. How many of you know God will provide? Look at that very next verse with me. Amen. We're closing, I promise you. We're winding it down slowly. You can't just drop out of the sky. You've got to wind it down. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Where did he call from? Somebody else. Where did he call from? Why is it that people tell me you can't hear God? You can't hear God. God speaks through situations. God speaks through trouble. God speaks through things that we go through. But you can't hear from God. There's denominations that teach that. And the damning evidence is this. That that damns the soul, amen, is this. Whenever we believe that which is not right, when we cleave to that which is wrong, amen, it's on us, amen, if we stay in that. The man that preached it or the woman that preached it, amen, is going to have to give an account for it, but you as well. We see here in the Word, the angel spoke to him out of heaven. He didn't come down and interact face to face, but he heard a voice, amen, from heaven. How important is it? Listen to me now. You've got the knife in your hand. Your son or daughter is laid before the Lord and you're fixing to be obedient to a voice you heard, how important is it to make sure that we've got our ears open and our hearts open before the Lord, amen, and we're living where we're supposed to live, amen, and we're doing what God says do, amen, in every aspect area of our life, amen. How important is it, amen, that we hear at this moment? If God speaks, I want to do what? Hearing. I don't want there to be nothing blocking the line. I don't want there to be nothing in my way. I don't want to be anything, amen, to confuse me at this point. Why? Because this is where the rubber meets the road, amen. I'm fixing to do this, and I need to hear from God if he's going to do anything. The next time somebody tells you that you can't hear God, tell them, say, would you read the 22nd chapter of Genesis? And if you're on the mountain with your child and a voice from heaven says, hold on, will you pay attention to it or will you carry out the slaying? I guarantee you the attitude changes when the knife's in your hand and you're standing there with your hand on the head and you're fixing to do this. <laughs> I know it's serious, but it causes, I, sometimes I have to laugh to keep from getting angry. Because, amen, we have the, uh, I hate to say it, but it's an ignorance, amen, of, the, of the, the relationship, the personality of the relationship with God. In other words, my relationship is not stemmed on this church or me preaching behind this pulpit. My relationship with God, amen, has nothing to do with that in the sense, amen, that it is something, amen, that I believe in, and he talks with me, I hear him, I talk to him, uh, and irregardless of what goes on here, I'm going to continue to live for him. 
In other words, if I don't preach here ever again, it's not going to cause me not to serve God. If you never come back again, or if this does that, or if that happens, I don't want it to happen, but I have to understand this. I've got to serve God, amen. What comes, what goes, what's in, what's out, amen. It's about how I live my life. And I better be accountable to me and God. I love you. I pray for you. I call your name out. I pray over your family. But when it comes right down to it, I've got to stand between me and God. This is where Abraham's at. In other words, you better get right with God. And God speaks to your heart. And if you don't hear him, you may do something that he don't want you to do. And you say, well, surely God's going to get a hold of my attention. He spoke to him. If he don't hear him, what's he going to do? We better be paying attention when God speaks. Let that sink in. Let that get down here. You can have questions. You can ask me later. But just let that get on down here. Because we need to know when God's talking. Because there may be something God's trying to tell us that's of the utmost importance. Not just have a good day, my child. Amen. Not be blessed in the Lord, my child. I mean, we know these things. But they may be real, evidential things, amen, that God's trying to steer us from or steer us to. We need to hear from God. Mm. 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 I keep trying to close, but it keeps getting better and better. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thine son, thine only son, from me. It was a test. When we started this verse, it said, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. That word should have been translated test. For whatever reason, they use tent. We can do a Greek study and we can try to figure out what they did that for and why. Because we know James says God does not tempt. Amen. Any man. God doesn't use temptation, but God very much does use tests to try us. And Abraham, as much as he had done to prove himself before God, they were still more of Abraham God wanted. In other words, you've come a long way. But we ain't made it yet. And there's still more of us that God wants. And we're going to face more tests between tonight and well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joys of the Lord. Amen. You've kept the faith. <laughs> Amen. I get that backwards every time. Amen. But I know one thing that whenever He calls, I want to answer. I want to answer. Don't lay your hand on Him. Don't do anything to Him. For now I know that thou, Amen, fierce God. Seeing you have not withheld your son. The test was the giving up of that which was nearest and dearest to his heart. You may not face that same exact test, but there may be something else coming that's bigger than you are. It's greater than what you are right now. And maybe we've been preaching about maturity so hard and so much Amen, on Wednesday nights and, 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 and getting to it on Sundays and, and the Spirit of God's been moving in such a way and the messages have been really gripping the heart because maybe you're fixing to face something and you need to be strong in the Lord. Maybe I'm fixing to face something and I need to make sure that I've heard the Word of God and that I hear His voice and that I'm ready to do whatever thus saith the Lord. Mm. God don't let us lay down Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold 
Behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and he took the ram. And he offered him up for a burnt offering in the steed of his son. The place where he had laid the promise. God says, because you did not withhold it from me. He says, I'm going to give you an offering. I'm going to give you that which you can use to please me. But I'm also going to let you keep the promise. Can I tell you, the latter is better than the former. <laughs> Amen. Trying to hold on to the promise without pleasing God is futile. Amen. Trying to hold on to what God's given you, but you refuse to please God with your life. At some point, you're going to let go of what God's given you. Your heart's going to draw away from him. It's not going to mean as much to you. But the closer we get to God, amen, the more important the promise is. Abraham's willing to give him. Didn't understand it. But Sister Paula, I have to believe he had grown in faith and in trust in God. So much so he left the protection of his family and his homeland to go in search of a land God said he would give him. He had believed God when God said he would bring a child. Amen. He had witnessed, amen, the three men that came. Amen. And he said, Lord, if you would, would you dwell here? Let me get you some water. Let me fix you something. Let me get a, a, a lamb. Let us make you something. Let us nourish you and feed you. And in the midst of that conversation, they tell him that your wife's going to bear a son. She's back there in the background hearing this and she giggles. <laughs> me? Is now the Lord going to give me pleasure of my husband to bear a child that the reproach will not be on me? That when women look at me, they're going to say, Blessed is Sarah, amen, for the Lord has given her child, amen, seeing that I'm, you know, what, 90 years old? Now does God come and tell me, how can God do this? And the angel said, who is that that snickered? Oh, I didn't snicker. Oh, yes, you did. God hears everything. He knows everything. Amen. But the promise was precious. Willing to give it. Allowed God to restore it. And also bless it. Also bless it. How many of you want the blessing of the Lord? Behold, Abraham, there's a ram in the bush. Use it instead of your son Isaac. How many of you know what verse 14 says? And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my provider. Something I had come to my heart some time ago, and I've never carried it out. And this may be a way God speaks to my heart tonight. But I had the idea one time of taking the names of God and putting them on the wall in the church somewhere. You know how you see these, what's these stencils now you see in a lot of people's houses? You can buy them already made up. You put it on the wall, and you press it, and you peel it, and, and it'll have like happiness and love is in this house. It'll have all kind of beautiful little things. It's beautiful. And I thought, what if we had the names of God, maybe in that foyer, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi. You know, and, and they, I believe it's what, 12? I don't know them all. I've never did that study. Some of you have. Some of you know them. A lot of other denominations, a lot of other churches are real big into the to that I'm not saying it's wrong I'm just saying I've never studied it out like some others have but to walk in and to see God's name all over not necessarily in here, but somewhere and what it means Jehovah Jireh my provider period 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 God's going to do it.
Amen. You love the Lord tonight. You've got to believe that. If you don't, you're going to struggle in your relationship with God. You're going to struggle. There's nothing I can do for you, but I can teach, I can preach, I can reach out, I can pray for you, I can love you. This church can do the same. But if you struggle with understanding that the God I serve can provide any need, if you struggle with that, that God, I, and you live in fear, God's not giving us the spirit of fear. That wasn't what I received, Sister Barbara, when he saved me. He didn't give me that spirit of trepidation, that spirit of backing up, that spirit of running away. Amen. But he said he gave me the, amen, the, the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. Amen. Those three things right there, love, amen, to love anybody. Regardless of what they've done to me, love, amen, uh, uh, overcomes evil. Love casteth out fear, amen. Love is perfect, amen. Well, we can go through that all night long, amen. Power, amen. He gave me the power, amen, that rests in my heart to yield, amen, as the will of God, amen, allows. It's not for me to call thunder down on somebody I don't like. Some of them tried that. I believe it was James and John. God, you want us to call down thunder? No. No, James, no, John. <laughs> That's not what we're here to do. Oh, but let me get them, God. They, they bad mouth me. Let me do, let's just wipe them out. No. I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. I'm glad I don't have the gavel in the robe to say who can and who can't. Boy, I'd be a bad judge. I'd be wanting a recompense. A sound mind. A sound mind. Trusting in the Lord. Even in the midst of the storm. Even in the midst of whatever's going on in your life. The soundness of mind to stay with God. And to trust Him and love Him. God, my provider. Jehovah Jireh. It's not in my hand, but it's just a matter of time. My faith says, Amen, God will provide. Because my faith is not in this, that, or the other but it's in Him. Woo, hallelujah. If your faith's in Him, you'll believe God in the midst of trouble. I love you tonight. I appreciate you. God bless you. Tomorrow's Monday. Some of you's off. Amen. Shake the Lord's hand if you're off tomorrow. So thank you, God. Woo, hallelujah. I'm not. I got to go to work. Amen. But if you don't, if you're off tomorrow, God bless you. We appreciate you. We love you. If you've got to go to work tomorrow, amen, we're going to pray a special prayer for you that God will bless you and help you. But I want us to close out service tonight this way. If you will, I want us to come forward and pray for Brother Boyle.